Look what you do have instead of what you don't have. Welcome to Agency for Change, a podcast from Kid Glove that brings you the stories of change makers who are actively working to improve our communities. In every episode, we'll meet with people who are making a lasting impact in the places we call home. Hey everyone, this is Lynn Weinman, president of Kid Glove. Welcome to another episode of the Agency for Change podcast. So I am really excited because today we are going to do something really special. We are highlighting the incredible work of big brothers, big sisters, Lincoln, by hearing directly from both the organization and those they serve. We have with us Amber Norrie, the director of community engagement and a big brother and little brother match that exemplifies the power of mentorship. So let's dive in. First, I wanna welcome Amber. Amber, as the Director of Community Engagement, could you start by telling us more about the organization, both the the national history and the local history here in Lincoln, Nebraska? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I'd be delighted to. Big Brothers Big Sisters is a mentoring agency. We provide community-based mentoring. We partner a youth, which we call a little, uh, along with an adult referred to as a big. Very nice. uh, And they can then go into the community and explore activities together and they grow a mentoring partnership that in turn positively impacts the youth and the adult's life. This uh, actually started over 100 years ago in New York State. There was a judge who noticed a high number of young men coming through his judicial system. And the idea was to partner these young men with a responsible adult male to provide positive impact on the youth's life in turn affecting the recidivism of seeing them come back through the system. And it was very successful. So big Brothers of America was formed. Big Sisters of America then formed some years later. And at one point, they combined to become Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America. Fast forward a little bit to where we are in Lincoln. Let's go about 50 years ago. The YMCA partnered with the Sheriff's Department here to form a mentoring program called YPALS. And that partnered youth and adults together for community-based mentoring They joined Big Brothers Big Sisters of America and became Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Heartland, which they were for many years, Uh, and then Big Brothers Big Sisters Lincoln. Then um, effective this year in January, we combined with Omaha, and so Big Brothers Big Sisters Midlands now is serving a number of counties across Nebraska and um, a couple of towns in Iowa as well. So our reach is expanding because the need for positive mentors for youth uh, continues to grow. I imagine that's a need that will never end. So Amber, it feels to me like this organization is 100 years old, 50 years in the community, but an organization that is always innovating. And I bet almost all of our listeners, if not 100%, have heard of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, but I wonder if they know the impact. Like, could you share the impact of the work that you do? Yes, we, in partnering youth with uh, caring adult mentors, um, it it impacts uh, their life in a positive way, both the youth and the adult. And where we see the positive effect is in um, school performance. We see a positive effect just in overall confidence in identifying goals. And something that really struck me before coming to work with Big Brothers Big Sisters, it was evident that the youth's life is impacted in a positive yeah. way, and it's wonderful to have a mentor. What's really made an impression on me is the stories that the mentors share with me about how their life has been impacted. Just the richness that the experience of being a mentor to a youth has given to their life and how they've learned and grown as well. So it in turn affects the whole community because we're all benefiting from the power of positive mentorship. I love that. I love the description, Amber, but can I tell you what I'm really excited about? I'm really excited that we're going to hear about it 
firsthand yes. because I promised in the intro, I promised in the intro that today we're doing something special. And we have with us Brian Gerritsen, who serves as a big brother in Lincoln, Nebraska, and his fabulous little brother, Dylan. And their journey together started in November of 2023. I hear they've been building a strong and trusting friendship ever since. So Brian, I have a question for you. As a big brother, what motivated you to volunteer with the program? Absolutely. That's a, that's a great question. I moved to Lincoln, Nebraska in the summer of 2023, having stepped into Nebraska only one other time in my life. Oh, wow. Uh, well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Nebraska. Thank you. Yeah, uh, originally from uh, New Jersey, uh, and then I, I've been in the, the Marine Corps the past eight years. So I had, was stationed in uh, Okinawa, Japan, and received orders to Lincoln, Nebraska. Wow. So moved here over the summer. Um, I'm, I work at the school right at UNL right now, uh, doing ROTC work. And one of my coworkers, uh, Jordan Shea, he's a lieutenant in the Navy, uh, was involved in the program. And he's like, you know what? You'd probably be pretty good at this. And I'm like, it's a different type of unit. We're away from the fleet. There's a little bit more free time when we're in this type of unit, if you will, the more uh, forward deployed. So I saw an opportunity to engage with the community that I didn't really know all too much about. And I would say the rest was was history. Um, another motivation is the fact that growing up, I was the younger sibling. So I didn't have that opportunity to be that big brother. Um, and there's certain uh, responsibility that comes with that, but that is a yeah. great level of responsibility. And it's been awesome to learn that through Dylan. Ah, Dylan, it's your turn. Dylan's been waiting here very patiently as the little brother in this match. Dylan, my question for you uh, is, what has the experience been like for you to be matched with Brian? Well, it's actually been very great. I'm not going to lie, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you for not lying. He seems like a pretty great guy. Do you guys have fun together? We do have a lot of fun together. We went to this board game place in downtown, and they have this very they have this game I like. It's called Pokemon Monopoly. I beat them every time, and it's <laughs> yeah. To be honest, it's like the the best time ever going there. That's great. I I love that. Um, do either of you, in addition to the story about playing Pokemon Monopoly, which does sound like a lot of fun. Do either of you have any favorite stories from your time together that you'd like to share? Dylan, let's start with you. What stories can you tell me? My favorite story, well, well while being with Brian, was there's a fast food chain next, not next to where I live, but next to the Walmart where we always go shopping. And there's this place called Culver's. I don't know if you guys have ever been to it, but it's a really good fast food restaurant. But I always order the custard when I go. What do you order at Culver's? I always order a burger with some fries. Oh, yeah. Burger with fries. That's a great choice. And they do have some really good fish options. Oh, I'll have to check that out. So tell me about you guys going to Culver's together. Uh, Well, actually, he's never been there, which kind of shocked me. And I was like, you broke my heart for a second. <laughs> And we tried it out. He said it was kind of like Freddy's, which is a whole new story. <laughs> but Freddy's is better, he said. But Culver's is like an 8 or 7 out of 10, he said. And I said it's actually pretty good for the first time I've ever eaten there, you know? I love that. You know what I love about that story, Dylan? Yeah. I love that. I bet Brian, as your mentor, teaches you some things. But in that situation, you were teaching Brian some things because he had never been to Culver's before. Brian, do you have any favorite stories you'd like to share? I can tell you guys have a really great connection together. I, I definitely have a few stories. Uh, Dylan is a very funny and smart kid. Uh, something that's been eye-opening this, in this experience is the reminder of natural energy that 11-year-olds mm. possess. <laughs> yeah. So this, this program has been uh, great, and I guess it's a little bit of a shameless plug, but with hooking us up with things in the community that 
Dylan and Brian normally wouldn't do. Like a great example is we got, uh, they gave us discounts for a local like rock, con- rock climbing place. Oh, which nice. Which Dylan and I are being amateur rock climbers was cool. absolutely hysterical. So All right. I have a question out. for Dylan. Which one of you is the better rock climber? Definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> Good I answer. Was, I was Spider-Man. I love it. I love it. And then we became big fans of the YMCA's pool, which is yeah. awesome because especially during the winter too, because they have a great indoor heated pool. Absolutely. We're so lucky in this community to have such a great YMCA. So I would say it's doing the stuff that, you know, Brian and Dylan, normal people here in Lincoln wouldn't do. Yeah. is what makes this program so interesting. It's, you know, experiencing something unique. Yeah. I really feel like you both are gaining energy and benefit in the program. And since you mentioned shameless plug, we're all about shameless plugs. I'd like to ask you, uh, Brian, what would you tell someone who's thinking about getting involved with or supporting big brothers, big sisters? Yeah, I would say this is a great way, whether you're new to a community or you are from that community, a a great opportunity and method to see the community through a different lens. Yeah, just the seeing, you know, how my nine to five in Lincoln looks very different than Dylan's nine to five. in Lincoln, And then when I see him after school or over a weekend and, and talking about what happened in school today, he's like, what PT did you do with the midship? It's, you know, that sort of discourse, you're just, just seeing life through a different lens of an 11 year old is yeah. absolutely interesting, entertaining, inspiring. Um, so I would tell them that if you're looking to see the community through a different way, and if you're looking to give back and do some reflection on yourself, this is a, a great opportunity to do so. That's awesome. All right, Dylan, you're up. What would you tell someone who's thinking about getting involved with Big Brothers, Big Sisters? I would say for them, for sponsor, not sponsoring, but giving money or supporting this company is like a really great option. Oh, that's because cool. This company, I can tell it's built off trust and fun and happiness. I can tell. And plus, you're helping kids that might not have a father figure or a brother figure, you know? Yeah. Dylan, I think you should consider a career in marketing someday. You're good at this. Yeah, I might. <laughs> all right. All right. There we there you have it. Well, hey, I, I want to ask you another question. And this is for anyone, Dylan, Brian, or Amber, who would like to share, because um, we have done over 200 episodes of the Agency for Change podcast. And I've asked this question on every single episode because I love inspirational quotes. And I wonder if any of you have a quote you'd like to share with me, either a quote from someone else or an original quote or something you like to say to people. Anyone want to start? I got one. Great. Uh, I may not say it correctly verbatim, but I'm going to do my best. So in JFK's speech in which he was addressing the United States that we, why we should go to the moon. He said, we should go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Mm. What I take from that is you should do hard things because you might surprise yourself. Absolutely. That is so great. So great. Anyone else have a quote to share or something they like to say? Dylan, I see you've got your thinking cap on. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I don't have anything, but maybe an inspirational quote might be like, look what you do have instead of what you don't have. Oh my goodness. But I'm going to reach across and give you a high five because that was, that was awesome. Awesome. Amber, you're in the hot seat now. These, this match here, they've got some inspiration going on. They really do. Oh my gosh. My favorite is, uh, from a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay, Mm. wonderful poet. And uh, she says, my candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night, but ah, my foes and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Oh, Amber, that's beautiful. I can tell you have said that one a couple times. (laughs) That's wonderful. And actually talking about being 
a lovely light. This is probably a good time to ask you about the need for current mentors. I've got to imagine that you probably have more kids than you have mentors. Is that true? We do. Uh That is accurate. And so what do we say to people who might be on the fence or maybe they haven't even thought about being a mentor before? You know, that's something that I like to encourage people to think about. They worry, am I going a good mentor? Is it a time commitment? Is it cost a lot of money? You know, I will tell you, we ask for a one-year commitment as a mentor minimum. Many of our matches are together for years Yeah. up until kids graduate from high school, and then they still keep into contact even beyond. But we don't ask you to sign on for many years. It just seems to naturally evolve. So you have a 12-month commitment um, because we have just found, like, we have evidence-based studies that show any, really any less than 12 months isn't creating the kind of impact that we're yeah, looking for. Right. And so as you start to look at building and developing that relationship, and um, that is that 12 month is what we ask for as a minimum. And you, you meet maybe once a week, three to four times a month, we provide activities monthly um, that people can choose from to do. You heard the boys share some of yeah. the fun passes to try things and we partner in the community what is really special with big brothers big sisters is our match support program so as a mentor you always have a match support specialist there to help problem solve brainstorm listen guide you talk about ideas check in with you regularly so that you're not on your own yeah and Anyone that has a positive attitude and good leadership qualities can is certainly invited to apply. We do a very extensive um, background check. I imagine that you would, yes. And and we provide orientation and training and are with you every step of the way. So um, at this time, we have a lot of young men waiting for their big brother. That's the biggest need right now is finding those um, excellent men to come and serve as a positive role model for youth, just like we heard the story today. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is teaching a young man how to tie a tie, shake a hand, um, be polite, um, you know, in positive activities in the community and doing homework and even just checking in. So how was your day yeah. um, is what we are looking for. But we, of course, match uh, girls and boys to mentors. Fabulous. Um, well, I could really see with Dylan and Brian, I could see the strong connection they have. So nice. Yeah. But I also could really feel that Brian as the big brother is definitely has some really positive takeaways from the match and the program as well. And it feels to me like Amber, since the pandemic, so many people have kind of reevaluated their lives. And I, I hear so many people say, I want to make a difference. This is a way to make a real difference, isn't it? Absolutely. This is a way to make a difference. Yeah. So for people who want to find out more, they want to check out what it'd be like to be a mentor. Maybe they want to donate. Maybe they want to support in a different way. What is the best way for them to connect with Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Lincoln? Visit our website, BBVS midlands.org okay so the bbbs is for big brothers big sisters midlands.org um and there you can learn about how to refer a youth to the program if you have a youth that would benefit from a mentor you can also express your interest and get information on becoming a mentor with our nice. program uh, you we have a monthly giving program that you can participate in and a variety of events throughout lincoln omaha and council bluffs so there's a number of ways to get involved and you can do all of them or whichever feels most authentic to you. But we really welcome anyone who would like to come and have that positive impact. That's fantastic. We will have that web address in the show notes on the Kid Glove website as well for anyone who maybe didn't catch it or wants to come back later and check it out. So Amber, this has been such a fun conversation as we wrap up our time together today. What is the most important thing you would like our listeners to remember about the work that you're doing? The most important thing 
that I would like for our viewers to take away is to um, think about the power of connection mm. and the impact that it can make on, as you heard from the, the little's life and oh, the big's yeah. life, yeah. as well as the community. And that having that um, positive mentor relationship truly benefits everyone. That's just great. Amber, Brian, Dylan, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us today. I fully believe the world needs more people like all of you, more organizations like Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Thank you for being a part of this special episode of the Agency for Change podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's Agency for Change podcast. To hear all our interviews with those who are making a positive change in our communities or to nominate a changemaker you'd love to hear from, visit kidglove.com at K-I-D-G-L-O-V.com to get in touch. As always, if you like what you've heard today, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.